In one night, how many dealerships can you hit? Oh, uh, I can hit like four or five. My personal record was like 15 cars in one night. Wait, so that means you have to get this dash damn. house relatively close. Yeah, you have to, usually like 20, 30 minutes is pretty good distance. If they have two entrances, it's no good. What's good, YouTube, man? It's your boy, Ray Jack. You already know, man. I'm back at it like a crack at it, man. And look, I'm back at it with another another reaction. And I ain't talking about DJ Khaled. Because he got another one. You feel what I'm saying? Nah, but, uh, yeah, look, bro. So today, they got another reaction. You feel what I'm saying? Today, we got something spicy. Something good. You know, feel me? Something. Yeah. Shout out to my boy, Tommy G. My boy just released another video. Four days ago, we finna go ahead and react to that and see what he got going on, what type of shit he discovered, you feel me? So look, name of the video today that we got, the most wanted car thief in America, man. Come on, man. Come on. I'm trying to I, put me on game so I can have my shit locked up. I don't need no nigga stealing my car. Fuck you talking about. But nah, man. So yeah, we finna hop into this. So like I said, shout out to my boy Tommy G, man. And yeah, make sure y'all like, comment, and subscribe on the video. Turn on that post button notification so y'all know the next y'all know the next time I upload. There we go. My bad. <laughs> yeah. But look, man. With that being said, let's go ahead and jump in straight into the fucking video. <clears throat> a local car dealership is hoping that you can help find more than a dozen cars stolen over two days. Surveillance video shows three masked men entering the service area and taking five vehicles. That was just the beginning. Now, once it tells me the pin, I'm good to go. Okay? It's uh, almost like trying to guard LeBron James. This would be a payday for me. <laughs> I like this. This is money. Right here. You can two people in the United States over there. Hellcats are not hard for me to take. I even carry a red key everywhere I go. In one night, how many dealerships can you hit? My personal record was like 15 cars in one night. God damn. I ain't no way he's on the C8. Respectfully, after meeting their employees, I know they're not going to chase me. So I would take that literally right out the line and drive it out the line and wave at them as I'm leaving. In 2023, over 1 million cars were stolen in America. The business of car theft is a multi-billion dollar industry. Now, we've all heard of Kia and Hyundai boys who can smash a window and use a USB cord to steal your car quickly, but that's just the right. tip of the iceberg. On encrypted platforms like Discord and Signal, there are thousands of car thieves conspiring and orchestrating sophisticated heists. They can steal luxury vehicles from your own driveway while you sleep. They can steal cars from heavily guarded and fenced in auto dealerships, and they know how to wipe VIN numbers clean so they can put your car in somebody else's name. Today, we connect with one of America's most most notorious car thieves, and this is his resume. He's the record holder for RST thefts. He's stolen cars in nearly every U.S. state. He's done dozens of high-speed chases from police cars and helicopters, and he's on the run right now from U.S. Marshals. For reasons we'll fuck? reveal later, he's agreed to come to Milwaukee and show us an inside look at the business of car theft. Buckle up, folks. This episode is truly a wild ride. This is why this nigga squeeze men's guy. You know, this is not the reason, but shit like this is just dumb. You on the run, you want it, you want on the you want it for the US Marshals. Like you're wanting around the whole fucking world of all America nigga. Why the fuck do you wanna come on YouTube and you gonna expose yourself to everybody to see what you look like. Fit your description. You you I don't gotta see your face. I can just see your description, your body build. I'd be like, hold on. You look familiar. You feel what I'm saying? Like, I know this nigga from somewhere. Like, and you wanna run, bro? Like, you just, I don't know. I feel like, just stay, just stay low key when you're doing some shit like this. Squeeze Benz, that video of uh, Tommy G and him, that should have been the only video he did on YouTube. The rest should have just been straight to himself. He ended up going on fucking live stream with an Eon, started doing other shit with other people. Like, bro. This shit right here, right here, this shit, it's gonna bite him in the ass in the long run, I'm telling you. Let me fix my camera, hold on. But yeah, bro, this shit's gonna bite him in the ass in the long run. This shit's gonna catch up to him. Watch, I'm calling it now. Given the nature of what Felix does for work, he wanted our first meeting to be in a private and secure location. So I sent him the coordinates for an abandoned building by my house and told him to meet me on the second floor. We're meeting our contact in an abandoned building and he's gonna take us deep into this world. <laughs> Nigga Tommy the thug. Sir, 
Yeah, well, it's Nokia. Hi, bro. Hey. You're not the guy we're supposed to be meeting, are you? Okay. Yeah. Right. We're gonna see if it's legit for this stuff. He's how he gets into his real deal heist, real deal theft, Damn. real deal moving cars, moving units, and hidden dealerships, which to me sounds like an insane job. But he said second floor on the right. Felix? Good morning. What's happening? Good to meet you. Nice to meet you, bro. This is your normal type of meeting spot? Mm hmm. So nice, nice and secluded. Make sure we can hang on top a little bit. Okay. What is it that you get into? Anything taking cars. Luxury can be taking cars, but of course I like the more expensive the better. Are we talking dealerships, driveways? Park cars. All of the above, but my preferred dealerships, of course, all day are easier to get, but I can take a car from anywhere, anybody's yard, their good driveway, garage, wherever, it doesn't matter to me, to be honest. Is that a stressful job? Sometimes, when you have a lot of close calls, but I think, uh, for the most part, no. I'm used to it now. I've been in it for a little bit. I know how to move and get away, so as long as I have, you know, all the tools available for me to make it home, you know, I'm pretty confident in what I do. What is it you got there? This is a little device, a little Chinese device that's used basically for everything taking cars. Of course, I got nicer devices device? than this, but this is basically just a basic one. Can that take my car? I got a 2017 Chevy Cruze. On the list, we go try it. Let's go take it. Okay, before we put my car to the test, let's, let's talk a little bit more. I want to get to know you. It would seem to me that you gotta live in a world of secrecy. 100%. I mean, you know, secrecy is everything, and you know, if somebody knows who you are, basically they have everything about you, so. You know, keeping myself secure and not letting people know who I am is like priority in this case. This, you know, is not just key boy stuff. This is taking millions of dollars in cars from certain places. Somebody's not to get upset. How did you get into it? Just by chance, you know, I ran into a group of, of people online that were selling cars with no titles and I got, I figured it out pretty quick that these aren't the legal cars and uh, bought my first tablet like this, spent my money and uh, I count on my hands and people that are probably maybe you're close to me or maybe a little bit better than me. Probably two people in the United States are better than me. If you're scared, you gotta stay away from this because fear is the number one thing that's gonna get you caught. If you walk into a situation questioning the what ifs, they're gonna have. If I go in to do something, I'm going in clear headed with the intentions of doing it and I'm with a plan and I'm methodical about it. What does your family think about this? Uh they think I'm crazy. They think I'm taking unnecessary risks, but at the same time, I think they see the benefit of it all, you know. They worry when they don't hear from me for days at a time, but I usually tell them when you don't hear from me, it's, it's all right. That means I'm not in real trouble, I'm not in a new situation. So, yeah, the, outside of that, they just want me to get in and get out, you know. They never wanted this to be forever, so. Have you had any close calls? Oh, uh, too many to count. There's been a lot of situations where I've been surprised in cars by you know, officers just walking down the lot, they got smart and stopped pulling up immediately and they'll start walking through the lot trying to catch us. Uh, there's been a lot of situations where I've been yeah. made it out. I got to take them on long hikes through the woods and stuff. Do you take a car through the woods? No, on foot. Usually, yeah, I'm on foot at that point. Um, but if I can, I'll drive a truck through, through a field and push it as far as I can before it dies. Do you know people have died in this game? 100%. I've known a lot of people who've taken extreme risks. Think they're invincible behind the wheel of this car when you go through the hundred and fifty miles dies. an hour. Cars crumble like old people. One dead, or one dead, one arrest after police chase with two stolen cars. I mean, God damn, that's crazy. He goes fifteen, bro. So a lot of people have lost their lives, and I've had people who just disappeared up and disappeared on me when they were out doing missions, and you know, either they're in jail or dead, and you'll never know. If you got offered a, a normal job, decent salary, good salary, would you take it? 100%. I would get out of this and right at this very moment. I could throw all my shit in the lake and never look back. And I don't want to die doing this, you know. I love my family. I want to go to home to them. Hey, did you know you might get a big cash payout? So just stop and get a job, man. The fuck? Just stop and get a job, man. Like, why are, you, why are you still going? You can go get a job. What the fuck? After the interview, I wanted Felix to demonstrate how to step up. Here's how it went. <laughs> Imagine. So that didn't get your blood going at all? No, no. <laughs> Did 
you're gonna take my car, are you gonna damage it at all? Not at all. This is this is one of the easiest. GM is so easy to take, it's non intrusive. They, they won't even know that I tried to take it. So you go to GM, manual, USA, 17 to 19, smart key. Let's go give it a whirl. What the fuck? The light means you're ready to work. Basically, what you're waiting for is the pin to be red, and once that pin's red, we can start it. And then once that pin's red, we basically what you're waiting for is the pin to be red, and once that pin's red, we can start it. And that's it. That's it. And Wait, what did he say? Basically, what you're waiting for is the pin. Is the pin to be red? Once to be red, and once that pin's red, the pin is red. You can, we can start it. We can start it. That's fucking crazy. And that's it. That's it. And you see, your car even letting you know, yo, your theft deterrent system's going off, but the car is so broken that we can just take it. And now we're in business. Now we can take this and ride around the city and we'll get some more cars. What Let's go. Fuck? Someone can literally take my car, put it in their name, and just that's it? Enough paperwork, enough, you know, pushing papers. You can have anything really in this world cleaned up. And I'm so confident. For the most part, I'm not even using drugs when I'm doing this. Or just, I'm just driving around normal. Because hmm. I know nobody's going to even really look for this car once it's taken. Hmm. Alright guys, mission complete. We'll see you in the morning when we hit the dealership. A car dealer in Wisconsin was kind enough to let us come into his dealership and let Felix the car thief show us how he does his heists. The dealer's name is Dan Kunez of the Kunez Auto Group, and over the last couple years, car theft has negatively impacted his business. Felix conveyed that he was trying to get out of the car theft business, so we thought meeting with Dan could both be an audition for a potential security job of stopping other car thieves and a way for Felix to consult Dan on how to improve security at his lots. And Dan, being a Christian man who believed in giving people a chance, agreed to let Felix in, even though it was a risky idea. This is what what happened when car thief met car dealership owner? 580 made back, my bitch got face tags. Sorry, I had to dead you on the tab. It was payback. Feet up, laid back, and box play that. If you're feeling some type of way, then just say that. How does it feel being in a car that's not hot? Crazy feeling, bro. I'm almost feeling like I gotta drive it a little bit more safer. Like a grandma, you know? <laughs> Oh, see, this is all money to me. See, all the right here, that's all money. This is it. Oh, I like this truck. See, if you want to keep your shit from getting stolen, buy a Ford. Those are the hardest ones to take nowadays. <laughs> see, then you liked your truck. Did he? Yeah, I love, I love the Shelby Raptors. Great truck. Actually, I was a TRX guy before. Oh, I love TRX. That's my favorite <laughs> truck. That's one of my favorite trucks right there. Silverado? That's it? Yep. The RSD package of these Chevys, they're, yeah, they're uh, For the so money, yeah. Fours are, are, the average person can't do 24s. They're harder now. They have to have a separate tab. The, the GM, the GM, the uh, uh, GM came up with a new thing, 24 digit pin. And the, these tablets I got with me right now can't generate the pin, but these aren't impossible. It's literally just buying them. You can still get it. I just haven't bought it. And this is online? Online. Amazon. Amazon's the biggest contributor to this 110%. They're selling OEM keys, locksmithing <laughs> tools, anything. You can buy key cutters on Amazon. Like, that's ridiculous. A lot of these guys, they're sophisticated. They got key cutters. So they're coming into the lot. They're taking the VIN down. They're getting a key cut by the VIN, and they're coming opening the door like they own it. To learn more about how stolen cars get washed with clean VIN numbers, we tap in with our New York correspondent, Mbox. Mbox is a rapper who has many songs covering the illicit car business and you'll hear his music throughout this episode and it's linked in the description. Here's what Mbox found out about VIN numbers. So just GLE, I stole the keys from your mom once you yank out the tracker, switch the place and you're gone. I got the drop on a crib that got an RS Avant right around the city just waiting for a Okay, so let's say I have $5,000. I give you that money with the stolen car. What's going to happen? I'm going to have my guys disassemble your windshield. They're going to peel the stickers off the door. They're going to re-engrave the VIN numbers wherever it needs to be re-engraved. Common points of the car where it needs to be engraved is like the, the engine bay or sometimes in some of the ballparks under, under the passenger seat where the battery is. Which are all the VINs that you cover? So on the BMW sticker, typically, we change the sticker behind the license plate. We change the two stickers that are on the door, the tire, and the VIN information. We re-engrave the engine bay uh, the number. Because it's not a sticker, it's actually engraved. Yeah, it's board. engraved into the metal. Also, I know we had said something about the actual VIN in the computer. What, what comes out, so when you do the swap, what does the new VIN look like? 
So that's the add-on to the swap price. It's typically ranges from like twenty five hundred to five thousand to reprogram the ECU. Okay, and what is reprogramming the ECU until? So we delete the old number, VIN number, and uh, we put the new one back on. You delete the stolen VIN number. Right. Manscaped's 20% off summer sale is here. That means you can finally snag the performance package five. And so basically, I'm able to unlock it, just hop in and program a key and be gone in 30 seconds. And the most sophisticated dealers at Ashton Martin dealership, they had the whole security and everything. They didn't even know I was there. Same way to guy, a few nights ago, go to our second more store. Uh -huh. Took a Camaro in six minutes, pulled up. And that's yeah, slow. That seems slow, but it's like how slow. I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you how these Camaros are started. You're gonna be absolutely sick. You're gonna be like, I don't even understand why this is possible. Really? Yeah. yeah if it took him six minutes, he sucks at his job. 100%. I'm gonna be honest with you. Even uh, 100 miles that way into Chicago, this dealership would be getting hit every day. Those cameras, absolutely no good. Nine times out of ten, those aren't even hardwired directly for video feed. That's gonna be wireless and they're only using a power source. I turn on a Wi Fi jammer, no good. That's just done. <laughs> You know those police boxes they're trying to get you guys to buy with the lights and everything? Yeah. Trash. Don't even buy it because a jammer, no cellular service, it doesn't work. It right off. No, cuts it right off. Everything in a 50 meter area right here would work. Would it work? The OnStar, none of that. Everything? Yeah. That's another side of the thing is people are using credit profiles, buying cars from the dealers on the fake yeah. profiles, yeah, yeah, and then selling them. The, time yeah. the new thing right now is cars being traded in yeah they, they're, they're only trading them in yeah. with only two keys and you, there's three keys in the system gotta have your guys start pulling lots they're of different devices titles. they're getting clean titles yep the big titles and guess who's the number one producer of that china <laughs> people will ask me like hey i want i i have a clean title for a 2024 grand cherokee find me a 21 because it's the same body style and they'll buy the sticker swap it and use the clean title to come and sell it back to the dealer or <laughs> the i can have somebody generate a car talk history behind a fake zen and you'll look at it and go oh it's all like they've been maintaining this car since the day that, and it's not even it's so bad i can have gm acknowledge an mco which is a manufacturing <clears throat> certificate of origin and they didn't even produce it how is that possible because they're just people are just stamping not even thinking they're just doing mm -hmm. and they're contributing to a multi-million dollar fraud scheme that doesn't just end at stolen cars it yeah. goes into every, every credit card human trafficking yeah. theft burglary a lot of these 1500s these are being used as rammers these are just being used yeah, to yeah, take yeah. other more expensive cars or to take down store buildings you know to go into Prada everybody <laughs>
if you wait for the blue light, when it's blue, it means you're ready to work. So you see how it's blue? Now you just go to hop function, add a key, spin, this is, this is the glitch, this is the how everybody's taking GMs. And but see, this is the thing, this is not even the nice tablet. This is a cheap tablet that you can buy for, the alarm might go off, no alarm, see? When it's unlocked, there's no alarm. Right now, we should be going beep, 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 beep. And then once it reads the pin, you don't touch anything. Like you see, reading pin. Now, once it tells me the pin, I'm good to go. An award-winning trading app that is as easy to set up as your favorite playlist. Voted most popular I can now take this and start another car. I'm alive. Oh, shit. I can go all over this time. <laughs> okay, will you be my witness in court that I, I wasn't? Okay. I oh, you. there he goes. Just like that. There's no stopping him. It's uh, almost like trying to guard LeBron James. This would be a payday for me. <laughs> uh, rightfully, it's not mine, so we're gonna leave it. But yeah, this is kind of just a normal day for me. This is what I guess our job consists of. A lot of people, when they take these, they forget that there's no key, because there's no key for this. So right. if they turn it off to get guns, oh shit, I forgot. Ah, uh, hell no. Nah. shut it off, like, look. Now it's true, now you know. Now you're not restarting. Gotcha. Put your uh -oh. foot back up and do that again. Something Wait, so what happened? Wow. Oh, oh shit. I forgot. Wow. Until you completely shut it off. Like Until you completely shut it off. Okay. Look. Now it's true. Now you're not. Now you're not restarting. Gotcha. But you got to put back up and do that again. Sometimes there's cars that I will never even program a key for. I'll just drive it with that. Well, first, what's the MSRP of a car like this? Retail, I would guess, 25 grand -ish. What do you think he's selling it for? Almost a half. 15 grand? I guess maybe. He said he's going for between $500 and $1,000. So they're not even <laughs> using these to drive unless it's like a kid. Maybe a kid wants to use it for a drive-by or just okay, wants to be cool yeah, in the yeah. hood and drive around and pick up their girlfriend from high school. But for the most part, these are actually being used to drive through the fences or take the damage for the more valuable cars. For the better cars. It's almost hard to, to fathom. <laughs> and just like that, a car's wow. off the lot. So now what happens? The car just goes off the lot. What happens now? Sometimes we don't even know. And somebody will just realize, oh, wait, where'd that car go? Then we look at our security footage, call our security team, then call the police. Our recovery rate is not great getting them back. Some of the Hellcats and stuff, yes. Uh, but there's some stuff we never see again. Who takes the hit on this? Hopefully the insurance company. From a dealership standpoint, it's cost us more than half a million dollars. They steal a Hellcat. Insurance is 100 grand. If we recover it, then we only get 60% of the value from the insurance company, so we'll call it 60 grand. If you recover the stolen vehicle? If we recover the stolen vehicle, yep. And if we don't, then hopefully insurance covers it, but our, our premiums have almost doubled since all this. We have attorneys working on it daily, not just to try to get the cars, but to try to prevent it, uh, work with the insurance companies on that. Because it's kind of a national thing that's happening to everybody. So you're fighting with the insurance companies. It's endless time and resources. So when you look at it from a business point of view, uh, our insurance rates have almost doubled. So for these bigger stores, mm -hmm. that's a lot, a lot of money. Okay, car gets stolen, call it insurance, police reports, all that stuff. Yeah. It doesn't get recovered, you get the value of the car. If it does, you get 60% of the value. So if it's smashed, this, that. And they damage the electrical system to tear out any electrical system. When you talk to car thieves, it's a common thought process that what they are doing is largely a victimless crime because, well, the insurance companies will pay for it anyways. To see if this is true, we spoke to Muhammad, a Milwaukee insurance agent, to see how car theft impacts <laughs> the common man. I would say that majority of Milwaukee consumers have seen a rate increase, and it is due into factor of, you know, uh, stolen vehicles, theft on uh, uh, personal property, mainly just overall the inflation of the vehicle. So again, it all ties into a part. So I've known friends and family who've had their vehicles stolen. I've personally had my vehicle broken into multiple times um, in certain parts of the town. It's not something you really want to deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. It kind of ruins your day, ruins your week. But it's unfortunately the the life that we live in. Of the aftermath, you know, if their if their car gets stolen, you know, and they can't make ends meet, they can't get to work. 
they can't take their kids to school. Um, that's a lot of stress for a person to kind of deal with. You know, if you're um, getting that's evicted, uh, you know, again, you have rent that's got to get paid. You know, you have bills that need to get paid. Primarily, that vehicle was your means of getting to from point A to point B. Theft and vandalism and cars being stolen, that affects the whole community as a whole. And I'll tell you this, 110%, they are not fingerprinting these cars when they're recovering. They are not even attempting to figure out who took them. If they're not catching them in the moment, it's when those things go out, they'll let it go. A lot of officers just give up. They'll see me going past them 140 and they pull out and then just pull right over because they're like, what's the point? You know, I'm going to lose my job if I even chase them. This car thing really took off during the pandemic. Everybody was bored. And, yeah, you know, sure. Hellcats are not hard for me to take. I even carry a red key everywhere I go just so I can get all the HP of the car. But if I don't, I got regulars. Like, I just got the... You know, my biggest... No, I can get these. The thing is, I can get these from the company. What the but they're selling it to me without a license. To me, that I don't understand how that's possible. Even the stuff we have to provide to them. Yeah. Proof of ownership, copies of title. I've never been asked that. This tablet is literally registered to an address in North Korea, and the company lets it. North Korea? Yeah. Is Kim Jong-un in on this, yeah, or what? Say. I mean, you can it's literally, you can make the address one, two, three, suck my <laughs> and take it. Father's Day, I caught a guy, he was eating crabs. You know, and I thought <laughs> bad about it. That's why I stepped away from the key thing. I'm like, like, this is, we're crossing a line here now. You know, because obviously in a lot of people's mentality, it's the dealership's not suffering. Screw the man, you know, but to me, I understand the consequences of it all. You know? And see, the other thing is, I didn't even bring the other device. There's a device that uh, somebody gifted it to me. He sent it to me from free. It's a $3,000 device. I can take any Toyota or Lexus through the headlight. If you start noticing your vehicles are being damaged and they're ripping the headlights off or ripping the bumpers, they're trying they're trying to access the the, uh, the plug, the harness for the headlight. You can use you can brute force it through that. We call it a can bus attack. That some guy just gave it to you. Yeah, he gifted it to me. How much money do you stand to make in a year? I, mean, like, I could make a thousand dollars a month, but a scheme in which it's not worth it whatsoever. If I could walk away from all this and be in a position to where I'm making like a, even just a regular average salary, that's beautiful to me. I go home to my daughter every night, hug her and kiss her, and never think about this again. So why Most don't you people, do that? They're buying them and then they're sitting on them. They're ordering the stickers, the titles, cleaning them up, and then either they're sending them to other countries or they're sending them back to Carvana. That's the big move right now, Carvana. Carmax. But basically, you're putting your life at risk right now for between 80 and 120k a year. A year, really. Felix was not done stealing cars. He wanted to get some more action, so we headed to another dealership with more selection <laughs> to see what he could do. Here's what he stole next. Pull over, take the tracker out the whip. Range Rover Sport, I'm on the jacket doing tricks. Keep swimming, got the paddles in the ship. I'ma keep rapping, but I dabble with the skits. In one night, how many dealerships can you hit? Oh, I can hit like four or five. My personal record was like 15 cars in one night. So that means you got this dash damn. house relatively close. Oh, you have to, usually like 20, 30 minutes is pretty good distance. If they have two entrances, it's no good. They want to they wanna operate on a one-way in, one-way out type system. Because if not, you see all this is basically slim pickings. Like all that stuff, there's not anywhere near the building. Anybody can come in and just grab this and dip off it. They're not even going to trigger to see there's no motion sensors. There's no sensors right here or a gate that's stopping me or nothing. All this is too far for those cameras to even recognize. <laughs> so anything in this back lot right here would be easily like that. I like this. This is money right here. So how is the security on this dealership? Are those cameras up there? No. Nope. That's all for lighting and, and, and like this is this is probably one of the worst dealerships I've seen. That's silly tough. They got two of The only is. thing that's saving them is that a lot of these are forwards. There's no security, there's no uh, loudspeakers back here to deter anybody. I basically can get dropped off right in that parking lot, walk into here and hang out in this lot for hours on end and they wouldn't even know. And see this is to me this is like a wet dream. Like they find this many Shelby trucks in this one spot. He said a wet dream. Unheard of. That's hella yeah, serious. Like, why, why is this city right here? That should not be city. Can you take that? Oh yeah, hundred percent. See it's so far from the building. He's not even gonna know I busted his window and I'm in his car. Like <laughs> Has this spot ever been hit by car thieves? Uh yeah, a couple of times. We had some test drives pull right off and you know go get the tin windows tinted and so it usually happens more if we are busy, you know, got two, three customers and then just send them on, on their way, you know, how they take you, off from it. How do you let a test drive pull off? You gotta fill out paperwork for one. You gotta show proof of ID for two. Regardless if it's in a different, if it's a fake ID or not, you have the picture up. You have a picture of the nigga. Like, bro, what? And you got, I don't know, bro. 
I feel like it's just a lot of a lot of I don't know how these niggas doing this. <laughs> these niggas are getting away with it. I feel like personally it's a lot of steps to that you gotta take in order to fill out or in order to fucking uh do a test drive. There's a lot of steps you gotta take to do a test drive. You gotta fill out a lot of paperwork, you gotta fill out a lot of information, making sure everything valid and pertains back to you type shit. Just in case you get shit you crash, somebody crashes into you. Whatever, the car break down, we'll do what the will. You feel what I'm saying? So it's like, how the fuck are these niggas getting away with this shit? How y'all letting these niggas get away? Like, come on now, bro. The dealer plate. Let uh, me know, because I don't know. Happen. I ain't a thief. You know, right next to our showroom, it was a, a thousand horsepower Hellcat, and um, five in the morning, they came and broke the windows, tried to get in it, but yeah. They couldn't get it started, so they, they left it. <laughs> it takes too long to program the key. Uh, I'm the guy who's usually hitting your lots, taking your guys' stuff, to be honest with you. So is it worth it? Uh, not at all. But it's a cycle, what can I say? I'm uh, basically uh, somebody addicted to fentanyl, except I got more comprehension of what I'm doing. Nice. That <laughs> nigga... That nigga said, I'm the one that's taking your stuff, if you wanted to know. <laughs> and then they got the glasses like I'm like Like he wanted to beat that nigga It's like Fucking dickhead <laughs> You know it's good people Trying to cope with things or mm -hmm. Trying to provide or trying to do different things And it's, it, it, I would venture to say that This is almost an addict mindset It's mm -hmm. Some of it's adrenaline Some of it's um, mm -hmm. They don't feel like there's any other way It's easy to some people um, a lot of it's addiction for whatever they're doing it for. Oh, uh, you know, I carry every key. Like, if that help, if that would have been me taking that Hellcat, that Hellcat would have been gone. And they would have never seen it. Those are rookies. Okay. Just to be honest with you. I can take anything in this lot if I want to, if I really want to. It's not a challenge. And I got track hawk keys. You I got everything. I got it. everything you can think of. It, it, this ain't nothing. I got a bag at home with 35 keys. It's just like, this is what I carry for fun. Just in case I come across a Hellcat. Or is that a scout over there? Yep. Yeah, see? I would not be deterred by the daylight one bit. I would take that broad day. You would take something from this dealer from broad day? Oh, yeah, 100%. Especially respectfully after meeting their employees, I know they're not going to chase me. They're <laughs> not going to even try to stop me. So I would take that literally right out the line and drive it out the line and wave at them as I'm leaving. How is it not risky to do a broad day? You got to know the state you're in, the people who work there. Like if I came here and they were wearing cowboy hats and cowboy boots, I wouldn't fuck with them because I'm like, oh, they're going to shoot me. A good car thief <laughs> will know the quality of the police force and the local chase laws just as well as they know the cars they are taking. For example, in Maryland, where the courts are more likely to go after an officer for a high-speed chase gone wrong and therefore less pursuits happen, or New York, a state that has a bail system that allows most criminals to get out of jail for just about any crime, are places that car thieves like to hit. But Georgia, where Georgia State Police are known for chasing car thieves to oftentimes brutal and fatal conclusions with their pit maneuvers, or Indiana, where the police have a reputation for doggedly pursuing criminals, these are places that car thieves fear, respect, and think twice before executing a heist. With that being said, there is no question that a high-speed chase, while it may deter some car thieves, it is a great danger to civilians in the area. Any car can get taken, but it's the amount of time that takes it to get in. Like these ram trucks, I can take those, but they take like four or five minutes. But the GM trucks, I can start in 30 seconds. Um, this is pretty crazy. I watch you every fucking video. I appreciate so. you. Did you think it was this easy? Uh, I've seen like the Kia Boy tutorials, you know, the USB drive, but I, I definitely like to see what is what it's like in an American car. What's going through your mind right now? This is crazy. As you don't see nothing like this. You know? it, it's kind of cool to see it actually happening in the process. So here we go, 19, perfect. Denali, it's a small screen. It's going to be pushed to start for the year. We are now in the front Yeah, left. this is perfect. Look. And look, now I'm going to show you guys the big boy pad. It doesn't make no difference, but it's the same thing. Basically a more upgraded version of the tab I already showed you. That's called IMMO. That's basically the immobilizer. That's what controls the whole key system and everything. And see, the thing is, you can go America. If, I, if I'm getting ready to hit this car, I come, I hit GM, and then look for the model. You're going to do manual selection, GMC, and then Sierra 1500 at the right year, 2017 to 2020. Smart key because it's push to start, and then boom. Basically, now I'm ready to go. All I gotta do is plug up into the car, and I'm ready to go. But most times, I'd already be ready. I wouldn't be clicking buttons here. I would already been preset in the car and just pull up. And it's the same thing. You're just accessing the immobilizer of the car. You're adding a key. 
But what you're doing is, this car works on a system to add a key. So when that pin is red, instead of continuing the process, we're going to immediately start the car. And that's the glitch. So this pin's going to read, the car's going to recognize we're doing something to it. It's going to look for internet. And so basically, once it reads that pin, you're going to immediately start this car. And so when you're in the moment, this feels like an eternity. You're like, oh, why is this thing not hurrying up? Like, See, there we go. Yeah. And that's it. And then I unplug, and I could do another one, another one, another one, another one until basically the situation is too hot. And uh, you yeah. brought your water and all that. Oh, yeah, I appreciate it. Thank you very much. It's really that's that's kind of all it is, man. And I I could do this as many times as I want, basically. Like, there's no limit to it. The system's never gonna lock up. That's fucking crazy. I could crazy. drive this car with just this pad and not anything else. Like, is it illegal to have that pad? No. Most states don't even have laws about owning this without a locksmithing license. The technology is farther ahead than the legal system is. 100%. So right now there's a window of time. Right, for every scam, it's because this company. A lot of the companies that build these type of products, they've already implemented systems to how to keep people from getting this that aren't supposed to. This company specifically does not care. They will sell to a five-year-old if they got the money. And this thing can hit 2023 trucks. And uh, the update's coming out, so 2024 is literally two months away. So, I mean, you could do a million dollars in cars a week off of a tab like this. I think this video is going to force manufacturers to acknowledge they've got to do something. The manufacturer's got to be the one to step up like they had to do with the Kias and send out the update for free and mm. fix this. Why aren't the manufacturers stepping up? If you want my honest opinion, I and think the because Kia, they're... They fixed their shit? Has Kia fixed the problem with them? Alright, I can't hear you. Has Kia fixed the theft problem? Kia offers the security update to all owners of any two, two, 2011 to 2021 Kia model with a twist to start ignition system. You may also enter your Kia's VIN to confirm that your car is ineligible. Eligible. Ineligible. <laughs> Eligible. Eligible. Here are the models included in the update recall. So they did fix it. Twist to start mission. Why aren't the manufacturers stepping up? If you want my honest opinion, I think because they're making money. Either way, the cars are getting sold. Dealers taking the loss. If it was them taking the loss, they wouldn't be as hip to happy with this happening. The only time they care is when we go to the the, the warehouses, like where the manufacturing plants, and we're taking them out the plant because then they're losing. But when it's dealers, the dealers gonna, hey, I need I need a replacement for these cars because they still want to sell them and make their money. So they're getting double the sales if you think about it. If this dealership was located in Michigan. Yeah, or Ohio, you would have people yeah. running into a broad day. The only reason it's not happening is because this is a more of a rural area. Yeah, it's not going to take long. Are you ready to give him some consulting information in his office? Oh, yeah, let's go inside. Injured in a car accident? Want to see if you qualify for a huge check? So I have some ideas for you to protect your dealership. Alright, what do you got for me? Because I need it. I think the number one thing is keeping the better inventory to the front. I think either way customers coming into the lot are going to be gravitated towards the front of the building anyways. When you say better inventory? The nicer stuff, like anything that's SS, ZL1s, oh, yeah. Hellcats, Trackhawks. Uh, I'm not sure you guys don't get Trackhawks as much anymore. Oh, you got two here. Oh, you got two here? Yeah. I'm, then I'm definitely surprised because those are, are a hot commodity in this community. Hellcat Durango's too, right? Yeah. Oh, the 392 Durango's too, even then, they love it. They love you it. say at the front, not at the front of the That's Right wall. by the okay. sidewalk, yeah, but right in front of the building because anybody can walk up and not trigger those cameras on those sidewalks. I could do it. I could army crawl basically halfway to your lot and your camera wouldn't even see me. That and exploring OBD2 port locks. You can find them and get uh, a, a specific key made so they're kind of all matching so you don't have to keep a million and one keys. Again, you see, the thing about this community is it's like a rumor mill, so as soon as they know, they're yeah. never going to touch any of your dealerships again, just out of fear. Yeah. So the first time we got hit at one of our stores, they took the six cars. Yeah, they came prepared if they took the six. Yeah, yeah. 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 They, uh, they had the Trackhawk and a Durango both filled with people. <laughs> had all of our stuff. That's the MO. Yeah. yeah, and then uh, we had guys overnight, uh, security guards that were spent a bunch of money that we had weight there, da 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 oh, yeah. And about when we stopped, because that's why we thought maybe there was an inside guy. And about when we stopped, really, like we got to get got over it. It's over. Okay, fine. Two mm -hmm. weeks by, bam, they hit us again. Mm -hmm. Wi-Fi Damn. blockers, security blockers. Yes. yes. The only thing is, it's hard because your guys are at a disadvantage. They're considered federally illegal, so you as a dealer couldn't buy one and turn it on because 
If you're a neighbor and tries to call 911, they can't call 911. Yeah. But see, as a criminal, I can just buy it and turn it on and all your security cameras are toast. Right, right. So that's the other thing. I mean, you can get in more sophisticated, like, hardwiring cameras for video feed, but straight hardwire. No more wireless, no more internet, none of that, because the internet is susceptible yeah. to power outages. So if all your security features are Bluetooth and wireless, the minute that camera comes on, none of it's working. I think that, I think the, my biggest fear is secondary trackers all day. Okay. Especially that's ones, what you that's what scares me to death. Secondary trackers that are wired to the car, not anything like Apple tags, Apple tags are useless. Tile, useless. Any of that junk, useless. Get brick house security boxes that are magnetic that stick to the underside of the car, or low jack that's hardwired into the vehicle. And make sure when they install it, they put it somewhere that's not immediately underneath the, uh, the steering wheel because that's the first place anybody's gonna check. Yeah. yeah, but if you put it somewhere wired into the trunk or into the engine bay, they're not thinking in the moment. And that I think will give law enforcement enough time because most law enforcement want to stop this. Thing. Yeah, for sure. But they, what can they do when they just find a car abandoned in the middle of nowhere and there's no information about this? Low jacks will give them the history of how these cars are traveling, where they're going. And ultimately, I think it's going to show that most of these cars are ending up at other dealerships to steal other cars. Yeah, so, just basically, all the stuff that we're trying to do, just be smarter about it. Yeah, really, because I, and you got to also remember, they're watching you. Yeah. They're always going to be watching. You, they only got to be right one time. You got to be right every time. Every time. That's the biggest disadvantage to this. Everything. It's yeah. everything. Salespeople, what they may know. And then go, looking through the, the customers who sent in leads on those cars, who came yeah. to test drove those cars, mm -hmm. fake IDs. It's, it's w never fucking, ending. W fucking Daniel? Richie D, you driving? I am. We got you uh, on speakerphone with Tommy and Felix. Uh, okay. He's been super helpful thus far. I explained who you guys were or who you were for us. We've gone over all the questions that you've had. We've gone over, he's showed how they steal a bunch of different kind of cars. We've got a lot of good stuff and he's been more than helpful. So I just don't w, know if there's man. anything else that you may want to ask him or... How are, uh, because you know, it's just a, it's a cat and mouse game is what it really is. is it's. It's every time we figure out what they're doing or what anybody's doing to steal it, we try to change things up. How are they getting the inside information of what we're doing? Manufacturer, they're the number one guilty of this. They're literally, I mean, basically their owner manuals are how to guide how to remove OnStar. Every year an owner manual will come out. If I'm if I'm second guessing myself about GPS technology, I'm looking at the owner's manual or I'm researching <laughs> online about the car. I've noticed recently, instead of going to like the Hellcats, you know, the Chargers, Challengers, Durangos, all that stuff. I've seen a lot of Camaros. It's because, yeah, because I can, I can take a Camaro without having to use a bypass. Are you familiar with how more cars are taken? You, we have to tear out, we have to tear out the glove compartment and then pull the carpet and it gives us access to something called the Star Brute Force Bypass. And so on Mopar, you need to use a bypass. Most kids don't know how to do it. A Camaro or Corvette, it can just be plugged into the OBD2 and started like that. Like if you were here, I could show you, I could show you basically how easy GM is to, we call it glitching. What are they doing with most of these vehicles? Are they re reventing them? And yeah, it's usually re revens and we call them fake t-shirts. They're called fake t-shirts. Or you call them t-shirts. If somebody's saying, oh, they're doing the, I got the stickers in a t-shirt done. It means they did the stickers in the title for the car. What they're doing is they're selling them on Facebook Marketplace to unsuspecting people who are buying them. Thinking the titles are good. They're going to register them and then it's coming back janky. You know, either a week later, a month later, who knows. But somebody's getting screwed in the process, you know. Uh, thanks for coming out, talking to Danny and everything. I really yeah, appreciate damn. it. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> bro just gave out the street sauce, my nigga, bro. I ain't gonna lie. If I ever get some tough ass car that I feel like that ain't stolen, I'm getting the OBD, OB, OBD sensor or OBD, you know, OBD blocker. My bad. I'm getting that shit installed. I'm sorry. I'm not. Nigga, that OBD blocker, kill switch, nigga, all that shit, bro. I'm, I ain't gonna lie. He's a W man. So giving out all this sauce on how niggas is doing this shit though i feel like he's he wants to get out but he's not gonna get out at the same time like he just went in here and told one other dealership you know what i'm saying like he didn't go tell all the dealerships he told one so it's up to that dealership that owner of that dealership to go and tell everybody else 
what to do to stop this shit. So if he does, he does. If he don't, he don't. But at the end of the day, he took the risk and just told one person on one dealership. He still got other dealerships. He's he's going, mind you, he's going state from state to state to state, doing this shit. He's wanted in multiple different states supposedly. So he not he don't give a fuck. He told one dealership. There's a million dealerships out there in the world, bro. He's Gucci. But W to that man for actually giving him a rundown and sauce on on how shit ran for real. <laughs> Do you have your eyes on this one? Yup, this is the one. Beautiful. And sin unlocked. That's a big no-no when you're talking about community of car thieves. What percentage of dealership cars you encounter would you say are just unlocked like this? Too many. Like, at least 70%. Because some dealers do it that way. Yeah, they leave it like that on purpose. So and their uh, windows don't get broken? No, and then like I said, that's just enough. Because you're the car. Yeah. So they don't have salesmen losing keys, wasting time. Keys. Yeah, because you gotta think if the salesman loses the key, they gotta get it replaced yeah. every two hours. You guys don't keep a locksmith on the car, do you know? So you gotta talk to them. So if you put an OBD blocker on that, they're not taking this car. You see that little port right there? That's what I'm plugging into to take this car. How much did that cost? OBD blocker? Yeah, well, it could be like $20. If you buy a really nice one, maybe 30 But you see how easy it is to plug up? If they block those, it's over with. And you don't see this changing going forward especially learning what i learned today uh i really don't unless the manufacturers get involved unless they have specific ways or again even like he was talking about how easy it is to buy the tablets how easy it is to buy the keys mm -hmm. uh, unless that stuff tightens up other than putting million plus dollar fences things like that i don't see it changing no unfortunately hmm. Story update on Felix. He called me a couple weeks ago and said, hey, a uh, mission went wrong. A house I was staying at got kicked in by the US Marshals. They took my friend, and this was, let's say, a Friday, and he thinks, hey, by Monday, I'm gonna be on the list too. I gotta get out of the country. And initially, how we were trying to end this story is actually get him hired by Dan and Kuna's Auto Group and maybe put him in a security role. And he was very excited about that. But I don't even know if he's in the country anymore. He hasn't really been answering my call. You know, last conversation he had, he said, post a video, protect my identity, I know you'll do a good job. We're going to call Dan and deliver the bad news that, you know, there isn't necessarily going to be a happy ending to the story that we know of. Hmm. What's happening, man? How you doing? Oh, good. I'm, uh, not bad. Okay, so one is the story isn't going to have as good of an ending as we thought. Um, I know that initially we were brainstorming, you know, how could we get yep. Felix a new start, a new beginning. Yep. And um, I thought one, just I was very impressed that you'd even consider that um, yeah. given his background and given your business. Um, okay. yep. So I was very impressed with you by that. But um, he told me about a, a couple of weeks ago that a mission went wrong and that his friend got grabbed by US Marshals and likely he would be as well. And so I don't know if he's in the he's country. Yeah, I, I, I don't know if he's and he's on the run, I think. So um, I don't know if he's still in the country or where he is, but he told me to tell you like he appreciates the opportunity and that uh, yeah. he doesn't think it's gonna be working out like that, like like we may have uh, hoped. Well, if something changes, because uh, I did talk to people about it, uh, you know, like logistically, what would we do? How would we do it? Why would we do it? And, uh, you know, we kind of came up with a way he could have been useful and we love to help those people if we can, if, if they want to change, you know. You know what, and I, I don't know about you, but I got the genuine impression from him Me that too. he was yeah. just looking for a way out. Mm -hmm. and for sure, and that's why I even pushed the issue, because at first everybody in my organization is like, well, why would we do that? Like, yeah. Because you think he's just going to do this again, or if he's not making the money he wants, is he just going to do it again? I'm like, I don't believe so. I don't think it's about money for him. It, it was in the start. It's not now. I'm sure you're going to make the money where you can, but if he's got a fresh start, a fresh life, and he's making relatively decent money that he could provide for his family, I think that's what he's really trying to do. Exactly. Just tell him I'm praying for him. Tell him I'm here. Um, you know, if, uh, tell him everything happens for a reason, and I believe that. Um, we'll be in touch, man, and have yourself a great rest uh, of your day, okay? Me and Tommy, thanks. We'll talk to you yep, more. Take care. Bye-bye. So, folks... That's it. I genuinely hope Felix can have an opportunity to have a good, safe life. So appreciate Dan for letting us into his dealerships. That was very brave of him. Most dealership owners said no when I asked. And I appreciate Felix for coming out here to show us that because that was a great risk to himself. So mm -hmm. um, 
I hope you learned a lot. I hope you were entertained. I'll see you guys next week. Hey, man. Prayers for my boy Felix, man. I hope my boy's straight, man. He was trying to get up out of there. Out of the fucking car thieving, heaving, hooligans, and shenanigans, shits, whatever the fuck you want to call it. But shit just didn't go as planned, bro. I hope I was straight, though, at the end of the day. But yeah, man. That's going to wrap up today's video, man. I appreciate y'all for stopping by watching the video. Let me know down below um, if y'all ever had to get your car stolen. And if this video helped you on what you can do better to keep your car from getting stolen. Like I said, I'm doing a kill switch OBD, OBD, OBD uh, blocker. I'm trying to do everything in my power to keep my shit from getting stolen. It's that simple. Um, shout out to my boy Tommy G for putting this video out. I'm pretty sure it could help a lot of motherfuckers as well on... How to prevent their car from getting stolen. It sounds like if you don't have an OBD blocker, you, you just shit out of luck. I ain't gonna lie. It's like unstoppable. Um, but yeah, man, with that being said, make sure y'all like, comment, and subscribe on the video. Turn on that post bell notification so y'all do get a notification when I upload next. And with that being said, man, appreciate y'all for stopping by. And have a blessed night. Let's go. I ain't invited to the party, I'm turned up in my room I don't really like too many around me, I'm just keeping my cool I fucked up, I'm sorry, do I really love you? I do I can't lie, I'm blasted, I'm in a land I fly for a hop through the jet, okay, big bag I'm richer than your ex, okay Won't lie, only here for the sex FaceTime, I don't really like the text